Hi, welcome to Gen Con's event host training for electronic ticketing. My name is Renny Arupto and I'll be your host. Today we're going to be covering uh, how to do electronic ticketing in a nutshell, the quick and most common process and practice for accepting electronic ticketing. Then we're going to cover what you're going to need for electronic ticketing. We'll cover what the attendee is going to experience and then how to handle electronic ticketing, some of the common challenges you might be facing, as well as what are the most common scenarios, and then we'll go into a demonstration. Electronic ticketing is a really, really simple process for the most part. 98% uh, of the uh, scenarios for you are going to follow these three simple steps. You're going to log into your account. You're going to go to the event that you're going to accept electronic tickets for, and then you're going to scan the attendee badge. That's it. You log in, find the event, scan the badge. I'm going to say 98% of the time, that's going to be what's going to happen. For the most part, if you're a small event, it's probably going to be pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, but there might be some slight variations on a theme, and we'll be covering those uh, a little bit later when we go through our demonstrations. Now, what do you need for electronic ticketing? First, you're going to need to make sure, you're going to need to make sure that your events have been converted to electronic tickets you're gonna to need to have the right equipment. So whether it's a USB barcode scanner um, or a mobile device, those are sort of the two options. Uh, if you're gonna use a barcode scanner, uh, those are great by the way. They, uh, there is the, uh, you're gonna to need to have a uh, scanner that, that accepts three of nine uh, barcodes. Uh, they look very similar to UPC barcodes. Uh, you can see them on Gen Con badges. So if you've ever seen a Gen Con badge, which of course you have, uh, that's what they look like. Uh, that's what the type of barcode that you're going to need to use to scan. Uh, we here at Gen Con, we use uh, symbol scanners. Uh, SIM code is another one, and you can find them on Amazon.com. Uh, you can buy them at any place uh, you can buy scanners, apparently. So, uh, But there, you can find them for anywhere between $20 and $70, typically. Uh, the higher-end ones tend to work really great, and we'll walk through um, what it looks like to use a barcode scanner through our demonstration. If you're going to use a mobile device, uh, we, uh, we accept either an iOS device or Android. So if you're going to use Android, make sure that, it's, uh, that it has version 4.1 or higher in order to make it work correctly. And if you're using an iPhone 6 or better, then you shouldn't have any, any issues. Uh, we will be releasing an updated version of the Gen Con app uh, uh, very shortly, and you'll be able to use that for, um, for the convention to accept event tickets. Uh, another important thing to consider for your uh, for accepting e-tickets is to make sure you have the right number of people. You need the adequate number of people to support it, um, and those people need to be set up in the system as either a GM or an event organizer, an event host. So make sure that you have those people submitted to us, and we will make sure that they are added to your events. Uh, that's key. Uh, if you're running an event that's sort of small, you have six to 10 people, likely you can probably handle it yourself. But if you have a larger event where you have multiple large, large people, we have events that have 50, 80, 100, 300, 500 people, uh, you'll need multiple people to make sure that you smoothly get those, uh, those electronic ticketed scanned and get those people into your event. A couple important notes about electronic tickets. Uh, one is once we've converted you to electronic tickets, we cannot convert them back. Uh, we have already gone through fulfillment. In other words, we've already printed out all the paper tickets. We've uh, already started the process of sending them out. And so we can't convert those paper ticketed events into electronic tickets. However, if your event has not had any uh, ticket sales yet, we can actually convert those to e-tickets. So that's something to make note of. Now, let's briefly talk about what the attendee is going to experience here so that you understand uh, what they're sort of expecting, what they're thinking. Uh, tickets are purchased on the website, but if it is an electronically ticketed event, uh, the attendee is not gonna receive paper tickets for those particular e-ticketed events. They will only receive paper tickets physical tickets for uh, paper ticketed events. So what will happen is they're gonna have an envelope and if all of their events are e-ticketed events, they will receive zero paper tickets. 
if they have a mixture of paper ticketed events and electronic ticketed events, then they will have the paper tickets for only the paper ticketed events. Uh, this might create initial confusion for, for some of the attendees. However, we have tried to be very clear both in, in emails we've sent out, in our, our web, uh, web, uh, web blasts we've sent out, as well as on the packing list itself, we've explained how electronic tickets, tickets work. Now, when I say that there is no uh, paper tickets, this is true. Uh, however, there is a, uh, a, a physical ticket, if you will, and that's the badge. An attendee has a badge, and this barcode is essentially their electronic ticket for any registered electronic ticketed events. So you're gonna essentially be scanning their badge to let them in. It's that simple, it's very straightforward. Now be aware that attendees, some attendees might be actually showing up to your event with, uh, with the actual packing list. And they'll be saying, uh, I don't really know what to do. It says I have electronic tickets, but I don't have a barcode. Just let them know that uh, you just scan their badge. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you look at a packing list, you'll see at the bottom that it says electronic tickets are purchased the same way as paper tickets, but they will not be shipped to you. Um, or picked up at will call. They are essentially stored in your Gen Con account and associated with your badge. And we essentially, your event host, will be scanning that badge. It's a pretty, um, we tried to make it clear there, but I think some people, you know, they go very fast. They don't pay attention to the details um, in a packing list. So be aware that some people might have a little bit of a confusion. Handling electronic tickets, what does that look like? Well, first thing you need to be aware of is uh, you have to check for valid badges. There are several different scenarios. One of them is to make sure that the badge for your event is correct. So when somebody shows up, if you have a Thursday event and they have a Friday badge, that will not work. They have to have the correct badge for that day, whether it be a four-day badge or a badge for that day or some other badge that uh, works for your event. Um, and it has to be the correct year. So if for some reason something doesn't work, check to make sure the badge is correct. A couple other things you should note, if they have a VIG badge, if they have a trade day badge, those will also work as four day badges because essentially those have elevated permissions. Um, another scenario is kids with wristbands. Kids with wristbands have a barcode as well, but those wristbands only work for kid events. So if that kid with a wristband comes to a, uh, an event that's not a kid event, that that wristband won't work. So uh, that's something you should be aware of. Now, you need to make sure that your e-ticket takers, your GMs, your EOs are listed on each event so that they can actually scan the, uh, the event, uh, the electronic tickets. Uh, you need to make sure you get us their names and email addresses. And uh, my recommendation is don't cherry pick which events the GMs are associated with. Just give me the list of everybody and we'll apply them to all those events um, so that anybody can accept the tickets. It makes it easier on everybody. Another note you should be aware of is that badges are valid for when the event starts, even if uh, somebody shows up late. So as an example, let's say somebody has a Friday badge and you have a Friday event but they show up at 12.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. Well, if your event has started sometime on Friday and has not yet ended, that badge works. So in other words, a person who shows up late can potentially be scanned in. That should not be an issue for you. Also, you'll need to have access to Wi-Fi or cellular connectivity for this to work especially for your laptops. Your laptops absolutely require some form of connectivity to the internet, whether it be uh, connection to Wi-Fi or uh, access using a hotspot. Uh, they need access to the internet. With a mobile device, you can actually cache, cache this data onto your device, and then if for some reason you have either spotty connection to the internet or none at all, you can still accept event tickets with a mobile device. So there are some advantages to going mobile. Um, there's also some advantages to the web device, which we'll talk to in a moment. You can have multiple GMs scanning a single event. So for example, you have one event that you're, you have lots of people coming to, you can have five GMs scanning on their own accounts for that particular single event. But you can also have multiple GMs 
signed in using one account. Uh, we have some scenarios where uh, people have asked if they can just use their account and allow multiple GMs to be signed in as that a person. And the answer is yes, we can support that. We do, however, recommend and we would prefer that each GM sign in as their own, own account. And the reason why we prefer that is because it allows us to track if there's some type of challenge or problem, then we can see, we can start to narrow down where that problem sort of occurred. But again, it's not an absolute necessity. It's just something we recommend. Another thing you should be aware of is you can actually oversell event tickets to an event that is sold out. Or um, let's say somebody doesn't show up to an event. You can uh, sell a ticket, uh, another ticket, even if your event is sold out. We call that overselling. If a person has purchased two tickets for themselves or more tickets for themselves, but that person has um, is not able to show up for that event, um, they can transfer that, that other ticket to another person, but that person must be associated as a friend in the registration system. Otherwise, what, what that means is the person who originally purchased the ticket will need to be at the event to allow that guest to be scanned in. We're going to be demonstrating this in the demonstration to show you how it works, but that's a key point. Also, you can choose to accept paper tickets, uh, whether they be generics or uh, tickets from another event. But if you choose to accept a paper ticket, you need to submit them using the traditional methods and they still follow the same rules of they need to have the same monetary value as your event. Also, you're going to need to turn those event tickets in to GMHQ by 5 p.m. on Sunday. Now, for any other questions, please refer to the event host policy. That is key. Uh, we have covered all this stuff in the event host policy, so please check that out. Let's talk about accepting tickets. Uh, there are two different ways you can do it. You can use the uh, web client or you can use a mobile client. So you can use a PC with a USB scanner, a hand scanner hooked in and uh, that one use the web client using um, a web browser. Or again, you can use some type of mobile client, whether it be Android or iOS. Now, why would you use a web client and a PC? Well, one thing is, uh, there, the, the, you're very familiar with the web interface already. It is uh, pretty fast, especially using the hand scanner. That hand scanner is pretty great. Um, it's very easy to use. It's easy to just hold that scanner right up to somebody's badge and scan away. So that there's a couple, couple of advantages there. Um, uh, disadvantage, if you will, of, of using the web client is that you do absolutely need internet connectivity for it. If you're going to use mobile device, the advantage of mobile mobile device is that you can cache the information on the device should there be spotty internet connection or should you find a situation where you don't have any internet connection whatsoever. Um, but it is preferred that you actually have internet connection, of course, because then it allows you to be able to sell uh, event tickets to your event right on site right there. And that's a huge, huge deal is the ability to be able to sell tickets to people who don't have tickets to your event. Now, we're gonna be jumping into a demonstration now. And in this demonstration, we're gonna show you how to accept, accept event tickets for both web and mobile devices for both a paid event and a free event. Uh, we're going to cover the most common e-ticket scenario. We're gonna do that multiple times to show you what typically is gonna happen. But we're also gonna cover some less common scenarios such as when somebody has multiple tickets on a single account. Let's say they've purchased a ticket for themselves and for several other people. A good example is for True Dungeon where somebody buys a ticket for themselves and multiple of their friends. So what does that look like and how do you handle that? We will also cover a scenario where somebody wants to uh, buy a ticket because they don't have a ticket for your event or they wanna buy another ticket. And we're gonna cover the scenario where you have a sold out event, but you wish to sell another ticket uh, for, your, for your sold out event. We call that overselling. So we're gonna cover that now. In our first demonstration, we're going to walk through the experience of using the web client and a USB hand scanner. This is a typical USB hand scanner you will uh, 
you know, your mileage may vary. This one we got on, on Amazon. It's a pretty good one. Uh, in, order to, uh, in order to configure these things, um, you can actually get them out of the box and plug them in and they work just fine. Uh, you'll notice when you pull the trigger back, it gives you a little red scanner thing and a, like a little Cylon laser, say, and, and a beep. Uh, mine, mine beeps every time I, I, I successfully scan in a barcode. Now, uh, it's possible that when you purchase this, it may not beep when it first comes out of the box. Uh, these things are actually pretty cool. Um, it used to be that to configure these, you have to throw little switches, but now they provide you in the manual a little sheet, a scanner sheet, and you just literally scan the barcode for the configuration you want. So as an example, I would encourage you to configure your scanner to beep whenever it successfully scans a barcode. So what you'll do is you'll find that configuration for beep upon successful entry or whatever it is, scan it, and it will actually can be configured correctly. So uh, check that out. I really encourage it. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the process of scanning these badges and uh, the different scenarios. Uh, in order to in order to effectively or in order to have a successful experience, the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to need to pull up uh, a web browser. Now I've mentioned you're going to need to have access to the internet in order to be able to uh, get to our registration system on your on your web browser. So you can either have access via Wi-Fi, and at the convention center we will have access to Wi-Fi at the convention center or in the hotels, uh, there is options there as well. However, um, it may or may not be free. Your mileage may vary. Uh, once, you're, once you're connected up, you can either use Wi-Fi or use a hotspot, either way. However you wanna get to the internet, that's your choice. Uh, once you're here, you're gonna sign in, and I'm going to, going to log in. In this case, we just have an account, uh, my GM account is GM1, you'll use your account. And you'll notice that your name will come up here. My name uh, for this particular demonstration is Grant Murray. So I'm gonna come in as Grant Murray. Now the next thing you wanna do after you've logged in, first step is login, second step is look at your schedule and find the event you wanna scan into. So in this particular case, you'll notice that I have on my schedule a list of all the events I'm associated with. And in this case, I have some events where I'm the GM, and other events that I'm actually registered to actually participate in. So you'll notice that I'm going to attend these particular events based upon these icons, but the ones I'm a GM for are listed here. You'll also notice on the right-hand side that there's icons that indicate whether that event is an electronically ticketed event or your more traditional paper event. So anything with a uh, little lightning bolt here, a Harry Potter scar, listed here on the uh, the ticket symbol indicates that's an electronic ticket and the little little pop-up also shows you that it is too the little mouse over uh, here this is a traditional ticket and you can tell because a it tells you paper ticket and also because there is no little lightning bolt on there so I'm going to go select RPG event 5 this is the event ticket that I'm going to be um, uh, scanning for I click on this here and so the next step after you've selected your event is to click tickets. The great thing about this is we can actually see who's already been, uh, who's already registered for your event. We can see all these people here. And we can even see how many tickets are, have been associated with that particular account. So uh, as I mentioned, the most common scenario is somebody's gonna show up for your event, they've already purchased a ticket, and all you need to do is scan their badge. So uh, I've logged in, I've selected my event, and now Fred comes up and I'm going to make sure that I'm focused on the web browser. That's a very key step. And boom. And you'll notice now that it says ticket redeemed for Fred. If I scroll down, you'll also see that there's a green check mark. This tells me that this ticket has been successfully redeemed for Fred. And I can say, go ahead, Fred, find a seat. Now, we have several other people here that have not yet redeemed their tickets. If I mouse over, it will say electronic ticket unredeemed. Here it says electronic ticket unredeemed. And then here, uh, it doesn't say anything, but uh, it means that there's actually four tickets assigned to Allie. Uh, we'll get to Allie in a second because Allie has not yet shown up. But... We do have another person who's just shown up. Uh, we have Flora. Now, 
I've mentioned the most common scenario that you're gonna run into is somebody's gonna show up to your event and you need to scan them in with no issues. It's gonna happen most of the time. Flora comes up, I scan her badge, beep, and it says ticket redeemed. So it shows here, ticket redeemed, great. Now, uh, in our next scenario, we have a situation or a, uh, a model where Allie, who's purchased multiple tickets, is showing up with one of her three friends. Her other two friends are still involved in some other event. Maybe they got caught in traffic. Whatever reason, their other two friends are not here yet. But Allie is with her first friend. So how do you process tickets when you have a person who's purchased multiple tickets? Well, the first thing you want to do is to scan the ticket of the person who originally purchased the tickets, the ticket holder, if you will. In this case, it's Allie. So I'm going to scan Allie's ticket. When I do so, it says ticket redeemed for Allie, who has three more tickets. Now, uh, it asks me whether or not I want to scan for guests. If I choose scan guests, it moves me into guest scanning mode. And this is important, is that whenever you have guest tickets, you need to be in guest scanning mode. So yes, Allie has one friend with her. So I'm gonna click guest scanning mode. I'm gonna set this off to the side here. And uh, Allie's friend is Blinky. So I'm gonna click Blinky, boom. And it says, Ticket redeemed for Blinky. Uh, you'll notice that there was a slight delay. Sometimes that might happen. You might get a one or two second, just a quick delay as the system is processing your tickets. Uh, that probably doesn't happen all the time. In fact, that's uh, one of the first couple of times that's actually happened to me. But don't freak out if there's a slight delay. Uh, that's just a system processing. We have thousands and thousands of tickets that are coming through. So just like any website, sometimes you might little get a little, little hiccup or delay. All right, so I've now, I've now scanned in for Allie. I've scanned in for her guest, Blinky. Allie's other two friends are not yet there. So I need to get out of guest scanning mode because I do have people in line. I'm gonna click stop scanning. Now, when Allie's next two friends show up, we're going to get back into guest scanning mode and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but right now, they're not here. What is gonna happen, however, is we have another attendee, Frida, who shows up. Now again, this is the most common scenario. Somebody's just gonna show up and I'm gonna click, I'm just gonna scan. Oh, sorry. Click in here. Boom, click Frida. And it says ticket redeemed for Frida. So she shows up, I tell her to sit down in a kind way, of course. And then I'm gonna have Flynn here. Boom. And Flynn is, rede Flynn is redeemed. Now, if you look here, you can see all the people who have now been uh, successfully scanned in. You'll also notice that Allie has uh, two tickets here remaining uh, to be fully, fully redeemed. Now we have another model, another situation uh, that comes up, and that's a scenario that comes up where somebody comes up and says, you know what, I don't have a ticket. I would like to purchase a ticket to your event. Now you'll notice I, it says here that I have 10 total available tickets, but nine have been sold. So I have room to sell one more ticket before I, I've sold out my event. So Clyde says, uh, do you have any more spots? I say, I absolutely do, Clyde. And I'm going to uh, scan Clyde's badge. So anytime somebody wants to purchase a ticket, first thing you need to do is to make sure that they have a valid badge. And I know that Clyde does because it's Saturday here. So I'm gonna click on this and it tells me that no ticket is found for Clyde. What do I want to do? Do I want to issue a ticket? And the answer is yes. Then it says you can sell them a ticket. Yay, I can. I'm going to click sell ticket. And then it tells me that to sell a $4 ticket to the event, a confirmation will be sent to Clyde. So what I recommend you do is you tell Clyde, okay, this is a $4 event. Um, are you still interested? Clyde's going to say, well, absolutely, because I hear you're the world's best GM. And I will say, yes, I am. And then uh, I will let Clyde know that when I click OK, an email is going to come, uh, going to be sent to their account. And Clyde's going to have to confirm by logging into uh, their account and then confirming in that email. Once that happens, the transaction occurs and Clyde has then purchased a ticket. So again, I'm going to click OK. 
then the system is going to issue a ticket to Clyde. Clyde's going to go into his, uh, his or her uh, email account and then essentially accept the, the, the issued ticket and then that ticket gets uh, transacted. It's really important to note that in order for Clyde to successfully purchase a ticket, Clyde needs some form of payment or some form of system credit in the account to be able to support that. So that is another little thing you should be aware of that needs to be in that place. All right, so um, it says ticket issued for Clyde and confirmation message sent. And if you look here, uh, the checkbox actually has occurred. Now, uh, this happened pretty fast. Um, what will often happen is when somebody buys a ticket, the ticket will go to the, to the mailbox and you're going to actually see a ticket with a shopping cart. And we're going to demonstrate that in a, uh, the next, the next sort of the demonstration series where you'll actually see it in the shopping cart. Once Clyde has accepted it, it automatically gets accepted. It shows up as green and then Clyde will probably say, oh, I've accepted it. And then once it turns green, I say, all right, grab a seat. And now you'll notice that 10 tickets have been sold. All right. So uh, another person shows up and uh, the person says, I'm the guest of, I'm the guest of, of Allie. And I say, oh, great, welcome. So uh, where's Allie? Because you see, I can't scan in that person without Allie because they don't have a ticket. It's in Allie's account. Allie comes up. And Allie says, I'm here. And I say, okay, Allie, let me see your badge. Again, it's because Allie has guests. So I'm going to scan Allie's badge. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I need to go into guest scanning mode. And when I do so, you'll notice here it says, ticket redeemed for Allie, who has two more tickets. And I'm gonna choose scan guest. Click scan guest. And now I'm in guest scanning mode. So I'm gonna go to Malcolm. And I'm going to scan Malcolm's badge. Boom. Well, it says Malcolm Taylor does not have a badge for when this event starts or their badge does not provide them access to it. And you'll notice here that this is a Sunday badge. Well, this is a Saturday event. Malcolm cannot participate in this event because his badge is not a valid badge for Saturday events. So I say, I'm sorry, Malcolm, uh, you don't have a valid badge. You probably wanna buy one if you wanna participate in this event or uh, come back tomorrow, find another event. Malcolm goes away dejectedly saying, shoot. So uh, Ali says, well, shoot, I, I do have a couple other friends though. They do wanna participate. And I go, great. So Ingrid steps up. I then scan Ingrid's badge. And the system says, ticket redeemed for Ingrid. So yay, Ingrid is now a, a successful and you'll notice that Ali has one more ticket left right here. That means that John has an opportunity to, to actually participate. So I'm gonna scan in John's badge and you'll, it says ticket redeemed for, for, uh, for John. Now, you'll also notice that that, uh, uh, that little message, there's no more uh, messages for Ali. They're gone because Ali has, uh, all of her tickets have been fully redeemed. So now there's a checkbox there. All right, and in our final, uh, final scenario, uh, somebody comes up and says, hey, I wanna participate in this event. Uh, do you have any more tickets? And I look on the website and it, see, it says that I have, uh, I've basically sold out my event. Um, 10 have been sold and there's only 10 seats available. You do have the option of overselling your event. And in this case, you'll notice that Skip has not shown up for the event. So there is an actual empty, empty slot uh, Skip has not shown up. It's now a few minutes past time, and uh, maybe Skip can't make it because Skip is sick. Uh, maybe maybe I just have extra spots. So I have the ability to what we call overselling an event. I can sell a ticket to Casper uh, beyond the 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take his badge, scan it, and it says no tickets found for this attendee. Do I want to issue a ticket? Of course I do. So it says event is sold out. If you want to admit an attendee anyway, you can sell them a ticket. So hence, we can oversell. So choose sell a ticket and then let Casper know that you're going to be selling Casper a $4 ticket that's going to show up in their account. And in fact, I'm going to click OK and you're going to see it go into the shopping cart. Let me go down there. See, there's a shopping cart here. Then Casper is going to open up Casper's email. It's going to select accept 
and once it does, uh, I tell Casper to do so, it's going to, it's going to actually turn green. So Casper should in a minute be accepting this event and it should in a minute update. And uh, you'll just have to you know, trust that this is going to happen momentarily. Sometimes there's a little bit of delay, just like when you send emails, sometimes emails take a little bit of time. Uh, maybe Casper forgot his password and now he's having to call his, his wife and say, hey, what was my password for my account? All these different things happen. But uh, this will eventually turn green and then you can let Casper on into the event. But please make sure that Casper has accepted that event, um, that, that event request. Uh, oh, look at there, Casper did. So apparently our, our email system has caught up with all of the requests. And there you go, that is how you go through the process of accepting events some from uh, the most common one, which is just scanning somebody's badge, to some of the more complex ones, which is allowing an attendee with guests to come through. Um, and so now let's go take a look at how to do this with a with a web client. Uh, sorry, with a mobile client. Let's walk through the process of using the mobile device to accept electronic tickets. A mobile device has some advantages. One of them is that you can cache your events onto this device so that if you have spotty internet connections or you don't have access to internet whatsoever, you can still accept electronic tickets. Now this is not preferable because you may want to issue a new ticket to somebody, sell a ticket to somebody, um, or maybe somebody's already purchased a ticket and it needs to show up on your device. Maybe they just purchased a ticket at, at registration on site. So really it is preferable to have an internet connection. However, the device will work without one. <clears throat> the, other, uh, the other advantage to using a mobile device is that you don't have to have an external scanner. You don't need to have a hand scanner. The device itself, the mobile device itself, does everything you need. It has a camera on the back that you'll use. So let's walk through what the, the process looks like and what you'll see on screen. The first thing you'll need to do is to download the Gen Con mobile app on your, on your device and then sign in. You're going to go into sign in under, uh, the, actually that will be the first screen that comes up is where you'll sign in. And then uh, when you click on the little, the little upper right hand corner icon, you'll see a list of options. One of them is settings, schedule, etc. So I'm going to click on schedule. And schedule goes ahead and shows me all the different events that are on my schedule. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to select the event that you want to scan tickets for. You're going to select it. And you will see the details around it. And these details should say at the very bottom that it's an electronic event. You'll see here it says ticketing method, electronic event. From there, we're going to click scan. Now, on this screen, you will see all the, all the uh, tickets, all the people who have, have already pre-registered for your event. So you'll see Charlie, Ingrid, and Julie have already pre-registered. And Apollo has also pre-registered, but Apollo is registered for uh, four tickets. So uh, apparently Apollo, Apollo has three additional guests that uh, he's going to bring with him. You'll see that seven out of eight event tickets have been sold for this particular event. And you'll also notice that there is a, um, a screen here that shows a little template for where the barcode should sit when you scan. So this will allow you to frame it up correctly when you're scanning in an electronic or somebody's badge for an electronic ticket. And again, I want to go back just a moment and emphasize that if you are going to be in a place where there might be spotty connectivity, you'll want to make sure that you've cached in all of the event data for your various events. So going into each one of these events, clicking on it, and then having the information cached in. And of course, you'll need to do this somewhere where there's actually internet connectivity, of course, because you need to have access to that data. All right, let's go through the, the process of actually accepting electronic tickets. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the event, D&D Event 3, and then I'm going to go to Scan. 
Now in this scenario, the very first most common scenario is when somebody just shows up and they've already pre-registered. They have an electronic ticket for the event. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to take Charlie's uh, badge and I'm going to just aim it. And you'll notice it says, Charlie Sun scanned, scan another badge, dot, dot, dot. And you'll notice at the bottom here, at the bottom, you'll see that there is a, a green ticket with a check mark. And that just means that that ticket has been redeemed. It looks very similar to what you see on the web app when you do that. You'll also notice that there are now six remaining tickets, one for Ingrid, one for Julie, and four for Apollo. Now, Apollo comes up. Apollo's already uh, purchased four total tickets, one for himself and three for guests. So Apollo comes up with one friend. <clears throat> Apollo comes up, and so you're going to scan Apollo's badge first. And it says, Apollo's, Apollo Daniels scanned, attendee three, Apollo, has more tickets. Or, sorry, attendee has three more tickets. Um, do I want to scan a guest? You'll notice that it says, scan a guest here on the app. This means that it's in guest scanning mode. So when you have somebody who's purchased multiple tickets on their account, when you scan their, their badge, it takes the app into guest scanning mode. So now it's ready to scan any of Apollo's guests. Well, it turns out that Apollo does have a guest with him, but he doesn't have all of the guests yet. This is actually a scenario that can happen to you where, where a person who's purchased multiple tickets might show up and maybe one or more of the guests are not with that person. So in this case, you could tell Apollo, um, you know what, why don't you hold tight? Or you can scan that person in and scan whoever guests are there. And then we'll come back into guest scanning mode in a minute. But let's stay in guest scanning mode. And uh, Fred is one of, one of uh, Apollo's guests. So we're gonna scan in Fred, boop. And uh, you'll notice it says, Fred has, the attendee has two more, two more tickets left. Um, do we want to scan any more guests? Well, no, we don't. Uh, we're going to say right now. And the reason why is because the other two guests are not here yet. So I'm going to choose not right now to get out of guest scanning mode. And this is a very important step. If you are in guest scanning mode, it is assuming that the next person you're going to scan is a guest of, of Apollo, not a normal pre-registered attendee or a person you're gonna to sell to. So let's make sure we exit out of guest scanning mode, just not right now. And now we're in normal scanning mode, the traditional, more common scanning mode. Now, a Ingrid comes up and Ingrid has already pre-registered. We can see that uh, right there at the top. And so I'm gonna scan in, I'm gonna go up to Ingrid and I'm just gonna hold this there and boop, Ingrid is scanned. So now you can see uh, Ingrid is already scanned. And then, uh, Iris comes up. So Iris says, excuse me, uh, do you have any uh, available room in this in this event? And you say, well, I, absolutely. So you come in here and you scan it in and it's going to give me a little note. It's going to say this is a free event, but please issue them a ticket so they are counted as an attendee. Now it is a free event and what we want to do is we want to track all the people coming into these events. It's very useful uh, for many different reasons. Um, so I'm going to click free ticket and it says ticket issued and redeemed. I'm going to close and you'll notice that Iris, Iris here, Iris is now been issued a ticket. And so we have that in the system. Again, if you want to issue a new ticket, it's very, it's very easy. You just come in here and scan it. Boom. It's going to give you a little bit of feedback. You're going to choose free ticket and then close. And now um, it's been issued. And you can see John has now shown up. Now, a couple of people have shown up and said they are guests of Apollo. So remember, we already, we already scanned in Apollo uh, once before with one of Apollo's friends. But uh, this guest shows up and says, hey, I'm one of Apollo's friends. So we can't just scan this person's badge. Because they are a guest, they need to be scanned in with, uh, with the person who originally purchased their ticket. So I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna take Apollo's badge and scan it in. And it tells me that Apollo has two more tickets, and we're in guest scanning mode now. So I'm gonna take Myrtle, who's shown up, and I'm gonna scan Myrtle's badge. 
Oh, and you hear uh, sort of a, 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 a feedback, and you'll notice down here that it says Myrtle does not have a badge for when this event starts or their badge is not valid. That's because this is a Thursday badge and this event is a Friday event. Myrtle does not have a valid badge. So I'm going to say, I'm sorry, Myrtle, uh, you're, you don't have a valid badge, so we can't let you into this event. And then Myrtle will go off and be very, very sad, or maybe Myrtle will need to get a new badge. <clears throat> So Apollo luckily has a couple other friends and Adam is one of those friends. So we're gonna scan in Adam instead. Oop. And that works, that totally works for, um, for, this, uh, for, this, uh, for this badge. And you notice it's a Friday badge and it worked just fine. And it scanned right in. Now uh, Apollo has a one more remaining ticket. And so we're going to grab, uh, grab Nick here and I'm gonna scan in Nick, boom. And you'll notice that Nick scans in here. And uh, that seems to work. Now, finally, uh, another person comes in. And Casper, Casper says, excuse me, I would like to be part of this event. So he asks, if, do I have any room? And the answer is, well, we do actually have a couple more seats. We have some availability. So we're going to come in here. And the challenge is that the event is sold out. You can see here it says event is sold out. If you want to admit this attendee anyways, please issue them a ticket. So we're going to choose a free ticket. And the ticket has been issued. We're overselling the free event to Casper. Hit close. And Casper shows up here. And so you can see that we can actually oversell a free event. So we walk through all the processes. We walk through the most common scenario, which is where uh, somebody is already pre-registered and we just go into the event and scan them in. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we've walked through the process of being able to accept uh, multiple tickets on one account. So in this case, Apollo had multiple guest, guest tickets they per he purchased. And then how to sell a ticket to somebody and how to oversell a ticket. It's a very, uh, fairly straightforward process once you've done it a couple of times. The mobile app is a great app. Um, just make sure as a reminder that you pre-cache all the information in your app before you go on site to accept tickets. Um, finally, just another point. Uh, I've mentioned this before, but again, if you, uh, we would prefer that you scan in badges and you sell tickets to people who don't have tickets. But if somebody does have uh, uh, paper tickets, such as either generics or event tickets equal to the value of your event, you can accept them, but you're going to need to uh, put them into envelopes and submit them at the traditional route. All right, so let's go talk through uh, some other things you should know about, about accepting electronic tickets. You now know how to use both the web client and the mobile, mobile client to accept electronic tickets. But what happens if there's something that comes up comes up on site? Uh, for example, what happens if there's a problem with an attendee? There's a couple couple things that might happen. One is uh, somebody comes up and their friend isn't there. Uh, so let's say uh, a guest shows up and says, "I'm waiting for you know, I, I'm waiting for somebody who has my electronic ticket," or uh, an attendee comes up and says, "I'm waiting for my guest to arrive." A couple different ways to handle that. Uh, just make sure you know how to get in and out of guest scanning mode. That's very important. Uh, it might be easiest to ask somebody to just wait for their guest to arrive, especially if uh, it's really chaotic and busy. If there's only a few people and you're planning on only having six or 10 people at your event, it might be okay to just scan in the, the host and then wait and then let the host come back out when everybody else arrives. So just make sure that you communicate effectively on what the process looks like. That if somebody shows up, the person who purchased that, that ticket will need to be there to scan in before you scan in the guest. What happens if you run out of battery? Well, let's just say you should A, make sure that you have a full battery. Also, I recommend highly that you have some form of uh, battery backup, some type of uh, backup battery option. Um, I have, uh, Anchor makes a great one. There's several different options available to you. Um, just make sure that you have a charged option for you in case, well, you don't want to run out of battery on your phone. <clears throat> uh, what about problems with device like connectivity? 
So if you are in a situation where you just don't have connectivity and either you're not using the mobile app or your mobile app is is doesn't have the cached data what are you going to do if the badge you can't really scan badges well in that case make sure that you take a picture of the badge and then you email that that those pictures with your event id so that we can give you the proper credit and process it uh, appropriately but you're going to need to take a picture using your mobile device of the individual's badge so that we can uh, process that and again make sure that you you uh, you record which event that's associated with uh, my recommendation is that you print out the list of your events and then take a picture of that event id followed by the picture of the different badges so that it's really easy in your photo list to be able to gather that data hopefully that won't happen to you though now note that event hqs are there to help so if there's any issues, please go to the Event HQ. We'll be happy to help you out. Um, also note that uh, we have an active support team. Uh, so our team is dedicated. We have people there on site throughout the convention uh, to be able to be there to support you. And they're, they're there. Just use us if you need. But please go to Event HQ. Also note that I'm looking at the overall schedule to make sure that for those of you who um, haven't had a chance to maybe work with us directly on training or maybe you have a large event and you have some concerns, we're going to try to make ourselves available uh, fairly, very quickly and easily for you. Uh, there's also on-site training. So you might have gone through this video here, but we are providing training on Wednesday from uh, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Wednesday, July 31st in Indy uh, from 2 to 5 and from 6 to 8. So all you have to do is show up and there'll be several of us there walking you through this process. Uh, please take advantage of it. Email me if for some reason you cannot make one of those times and I will see about trying to work with you. But we're trying to make some good times on Wednesday to, for you to show up. It shouldn't take more than 15, 20 minutes for us to walk you through it and answer questions. So please take advantage of our training. We'll give you some more information on where that's located as we get closer to the convention. Again, contact the Event HQ with any questions. And I've sent you an email uh, with my contact information. So if you need on-site help while you're there, please don't hesitate to text me as well. Um, you may not get me directly. I might actually forward somebody else to come out and help you, but please don't hesitate to text me on-site if there is some, some grand emergency that you need some assistance with around electronic ticketing. Again, I'm your electronic ticketing expert here. Um, I'm not an expert in probably anything else in this world. Uh, so if there's other event-related challenges, please talk to Event HQ, um, and they'll be able to help you. But if it's around electronic ticketing, absolutely, please text me. Uh, finally, a, a good note is uh, on Sunday, the last day of the convention, we're going to have an open house. And during this open house, we'll provide coffee and juice and give you a chance to sort of show up um, answer, answer, we can answer questions for you. You can let us know how things went and we can tell you about some of our plans moving forward. So please show up at our open house and let us know what happened. I appreciate your time. I appreciate uh, all the effort you're putting into making this a success. Again, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, please don't stop, write down my phone number, put it in your phone and we will be there to support you as you're going through this. I think that you'll find it a pretty easy, very successful process, and I look forward to hearing your feedback. Good luck.